There seemed to be a lot of interest in my video about the German Brigade coming to Lithuania. It is pretty big news, so I'm not too surprised. With this in mind, I thought it would also be interesting to look at the other soldiers stationed in Lithuania, the Americans. In fact, approximately every nine months, a new batch of American soldiers arrive in Lithuania to relieve the American units already posted here. US forces are based in Pabrade and are somewhat independent of the German-led NATO multinational battle group based over in Rupla. So let's look at the recent history of American deployments to Lithuania. It's a scene reminiscent of the Cold War. U.S. troops landing in Eastern Europe to counter the threat from Russia. These paratroopers from the 173rd Airborne are the first of 600 soldiers to deploy for exercises in Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. All NATO allies, all nervous about where Russia could strike next. April 2014, 600 soldiers from the 173rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team Airborne, based in Italy, were repositioned to four countries. At the request of host nations, U.S. Army Europe deployed forces to Lithuania, Poland, Latvia, and Estonia as means of reinforcing the U.S. commitment to the security of our allies. With 150 soldiers in each country, it was agreed that these would be rotational deployments, with the Pentagon saying that they would be sustained until further notice. Specific to Lithuania, it was reported that they were soldiers from Bravo Company of the 1st Battalion of the 503rd Infantry Regiment of the 173rd Airborne Brigade. This photo here shows the paratroopers boarding a C-130J Super Hercules on April 26, 2014 at Aviano Air Base in Italy. These soldiers were then transported to Sholay Air Base in Lithuania. Upon their arrival, Lithuanian President at the time, Dalia Glyboskaite, greeted the soldiers. They were then accommodated at the Lithuanian Grand Duke Vaidotis Mechanized Infantry Battalion in Rukla. According to a political report at the time, the paratroopers took weapons and ammunition for quote-unquote infantry exercises. Then President Barack Obama said that the army deployments were a way to show America's European allies, as well as Moscow, the level of its concern with quote, Russian aggression and the annexation of Crimea. We take our obligations very, very seriously on the continent of Europe the Pentagon spokesperson said at the time. At the end of June 2014, the paratroopers departed Lithuania after spending a few months training with Lithuanian soldiers. American and Lithuanian soldiers worked together in performing airborne operations to include an airfield seizure, air defense artillery training, demolition, and special weapons training. Each force also trained together on each other's weaponry, tactical vehicles, and in the field operations, and learned from each other's tactics. If you take a, if you take a Lithuanian soldier, you take an American soldier uh, and put them up to the same task. It's essentially a coin flip, skill-wise, on who's going to complete that task better, faster, or, or win. Trying to teach them what we know, and they're trying to teach us what they know. Uh, so far as I can see, going forward, it's better than going backwards. But uh, they're getting better. It was then reported that soldiers from the 91st Cavalry Regiment, 173rd Airborne Brigade, based in Grafenvoort, Germany, were sent as replacements. The American presence would continue for a few more years, with a company-sized unit of around 200 U.S. troops stationed in Lithuania between 2014 and 2017. However, this rotational unit was later withdrawn when a German-led NATO battalion was deployed in the country. From the reports I could find, it looks like there was a reduced American presence in Lithuania between 2017 and much of 2019. A New York Times article from January 2017 did say that dozens of U.S. Special Operations Forces were deployed to the Baltics to support the training and resolve of troops. I also found an article from 2018 which talks about members of the 1st Territorial Unit, Deinava, of Lithuania's KASP training with U.S. Army Green Berets from the 20th Special Forces Group. Airborne. One soldier by the name of Corporal Mantas, assigned to the 1st Territorial Unit Dainava, was quoted as saying, The goal is to work together with the U.S. Special Forces. We share tactical techniques and procedures to ensure we can better work together. If we were to work with the Special Forces Unit again in the future, it will be much easier to understand them during operations in the field. I also found this 2020 video posted to the Marines website showing U.S. Special Forces training and mentoring operators of the Lithuanian State Border Guard Services Special Task Unit in Small Unit Tactics. A uh, strong, strong NATO alliance, uh, particularly within Lithuania, uh, helps deter 
malign aggression uh, in this region. And if we can be a small part of that in training up one of the host nation partners, whether it's within the Ministry of Interior or Ministry of Defense, uh, creates a stronger uh, collective of countries uh, across NATO. Larger scale U.S. troop deployment would take place once again from October 2019 and onwards. In fact, it was on October 14, 2019, that the first troops of a battalion-sized unit arrived in Lithuania. The more than 500 U.S. Army soldiers were part of a larger, long-term deal between the United States and Lithuania. Lithuania's defense minister had this to say at the time. We have sought for a larger, long-term U.S. military involvement in Lithuania and the region consistently and patiently. Therefore, the deployment of the U.S. Army battalion for a longer period of time is good and awaited news and a result of our efforts and investment. The U.S. forces are a vital factor to deterrence, so it will contribute to NATO efforts in the Baltic region. This larger deployment was reportedly enabled by Lithuania's investments into the training, infrastructure at Pabrade and other places, as well as efforts of the logistical support personnel of the Lithuanian Armed Forces in solving all the practical issues related to the deployment and presence of U.S. troops in Lithuania. Soldiers love it. They, they try to uh, make it as close to home as possible. Uh, so you'll see some have lights, some don't have lights. Um, but because everybody's currently working right now, uh, we currently have a lot of the rooms closed. But this is, this is uh, pretty much what our U.S. soldiers live in. And, um, and me being in the Army 19 years, uh, this is probably the best living accommodations I've ever had. Uh, while I was deployed. So, and I know the soldiers love it as well. An analysis piece from this Polish organization called Center for Eastern Studies says that the presence of the armored battalion in Lithuania stems not only from U.S. calculations, but also from intensive diplomatic efforts made by the government since 2017. I'll quote this one bit from the article. Vilnius used all available channels to expand contacts within Trump's administration, the U.S. Armed Forces, the Congress, and U.S. think tanks. It pushed intensively for the expansion of U.S.-Lithuanian military cooperation and the presence of the U.S. forces on Lithuanian territory to complement the German-led NATO battlegroup in the country. The article somewhat suggests that the off-the-record price of this American commitment was the purchase of American arms and defense equipment. It notes that between 2017 and 2020, over 360 million euros was spent on Black Hawk helicopters, joint light tactical vehicles, and Javelin missiles. But going back to the deployment, the unit that arrived in October 2019 was the 1st Armored Battalion of the 9th Regiment, 1st Cavalry Division, based at Fort Hood, Texas, and these troops brought over heavy equipment, including approximately 30 Abrams tanks and over 20 Bradley Infantry fighting vehicles among others. Here in Lithuania and Pabrade, in general, it's, it's very woody. There's more swamps, there's more sinkholes. The ground's just gonna fall out from underneath you and your tank might get stuck. Or during my platoon live fire, there was blizzard-like conditions. It was snowing pretty hard. It was pretty rough. I believe that this expanded U.S. presence has been continuing ever since, and Lithuania's Ministry of National Defense is sure to make an announcement whenever a new rotation of soldiers takes place. And so most recently, in September 2023, we saw the arrival of the Hounds of the 3rd Battalion, 67th Armor Regiment, and the Battle Kings, 1st Battalion, 9th Field Artillery. The rotation replaced the U.S. Army's Mustangs of the 1st Battalion, 8th Cavalry Regiment, and the Rolling Thunder, 3rd Battalion, 16th Field Artillery Regiment. I'm pretty sure I'll get this video out before the next rotation arrives, so I guess I won't be able to announce the next incoming units. Reporting on all of this, I can just imagine the pro-Russia trolls warming up their fingers to post comments about how Lithuania is occupied by the United States, a very popular talking point among this particular group. Hopefully no one is actually being convinced by these allegations, since it's so clear that the foreign soldiers based here are for the sole reason of deterring Russia from further aggressive action beyond what it has already done in Ukraine. Fun fact, Lithuania continues to be independent and has a democratically elected government. I'm personally convinced that the support of NATO allies in the country serves to protect this. Anyways, I had a lot of fun researching this topic, and I actually learned a lot more than I was expecting to. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and join me in learning more about Lithuania. Well, that's it for me, and as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel and want to support me in making more videos, please consider becoming a Patreon patron. Members will get early access to future videos, along with some other fun little perks. There's a link to this down in the description. Thanks again for watching.